Hi, I'm Hunter. Um, I run Shoot Retro, this little YouTube channel about film cameras and photography. And today we're starting off our video a little bit differently. Today's video is about restoring an old film camera, cleaning it up, but I actually want to lead this video off with something I kind of deal with every single time I go to shoot photography, and maybe it'll help one of you guys. Um, when I go and I shoot photography, I'm extremely anxious. I don't know why. Uh, I, I'm a pretty extroverted person, but when I'm out doing photography, I actually feel like there's so many eyes on me and I just get really nervous to the point where I almost just like, I almost don't want to go out and shoot at all today. The reason I'm making this video today is because of something I did and I hope this has some sort of meaning to you as well. So i really on the fence about going out and shooting today. Um, I had my Nikon F2. I was kind of dabbling with the idea of going out and shooting black and white. I have this roll of Agfa 50 ISO film that I've been, you know, really wanting to shoot for a long time. And I thought today would be a good day to do that. And I kind of just twiddled my thumbs. I was like, do I go out? Do I not go out? I was literally laying here in bed, just wasting the day away. I already worked out, I already done the normal shit I do every day. I was just laying there thinking of a reason not to go out and do it. And ultimately, the same conclusion I kept coming to was that I am under this immense amount of pressure from things I'm just thinking of. Oh, this person's looking at me while I'm taking this photo. Oh, like I'm, I'm not feeling it today. I, I just, I don't feel as creative as I was the other day. And this, these photos aren't gonna come out the way I want them to. And then I remembered this book I just read by, uh, you definitely know him, David Goggins. Uh, the book is called Can't Hurt Me. Amazing book. I couldn't put it down. Um, I, I don't read as much as I used to, but you should read it um, because I did, and it makes me want to read more. I'm going to read you a quote from this book. I'm going to tie it back into what I experienced today. So the quote is as follows. The engine in a rocket ship does not fire without a small spark first. We all need small sparks, small accomplishments in our lives to fuel the big ones. Think of your small accomplishments as kindling. When you want a bonfire, you don't start by lighting a big log. You collect some witch's hair, a small pile of hay or some dry, dead grass. You light that, and then add small sticks and bigger sticks before you feed your tree stump into the blaze. Because it's the small sparks which start small fires, that eventually build into the heat to burn the whole fucking forest down. When I initially read that quote, I immediately took a picture of it on my phone, which I just read off to you. And I'm gonna tie it into what happened today. I was laying in bed today, as you know, and I finally just kicked my feet off my bed and I said, I'm going out, I don't care if I shoot anything good or not, I'm just doing it for the cathartic aspect of shooting photography because I needed it and the first thing I did was I went to a spot I was very comfortable shooting photography in I wanted to knock the rust off I had to take that first step I had to get that small spark to get things going so I did I stopped off at this lake down the street from my house and I took a photo and then I took six more men and ten and then I was warmed up I was good you know, my fire was going. So then I set off for what I really wanted to do. There's this town about 30 minutes away from me and in New England, uh, I live in Connecticut, so fuck it, don't dox me. Um, <laughs> I've, I've wanted to shoot in this town for a while because it has some really interesting architecture. It's a town that up until recently has been really run down and decrepit. And then as the time has gone on the past decade, certain areas of that town have been completely revamped and it's kind of getting this whole new life um and i really wanted to go shoot it because i have this feeling that this area hopefully within the next five to ten years is going to be built up into something really nice and it might be interesting to capture it kind of like how it is now it's kind of reminiscent a bit of new york in like the 1980s or 70s if you've seen the pictures of like brooklyn or um the bronx uh, I think I think it's the Bronx, actually, not Brooklyn. I'm not 
I'm not from New York. Um, but anyway, I do this trip. I'm up there and I'm shooting photography and I'm warmed up. I'm good. I'm getting my photos. And then I'm just walking around experiencing this place. And I walk past a thrift store. And I don't know what just drove me into the store, but I just instinctually walked in. And I walked to the back and there's one guy running it. His buddy sitting on the couch. And I asked, you know, just straight up, hey, do you have any camera gear? Um, and I actually have my Nikon F2 around my neck. I was literally out shooting street photos and I just walked in, didn't even have cash on me. And, um, the guy's like, you know, he kind of, you know, scratched his chin a little bit, looked around the store and he's like, yeah, I think I got some. And he goes over to this shelf that's just over in the corner and it's dusty. It's got shit all over it. And he goes, there's some cameras in there. I don't know what you can make of those. And I said, awesome. And I'll take a look. And lo and behold, there's a Canon AE-1 and a Polaroid right there, right there. And I was elated. I was so happy um, because that small spark led to this fire that led me up into this area that led me into this thrift store. And then I ended up buying this AE-1. So I'm starting off today's episode with that story just because I feel like if I sat here and just cleaned this camera for... Um, five minutes it'd probably be pretty boring but i want that to be a little line of inspiration that even in like your really dark moments where like you're really not feeling it you don't you're not feeling yourself it's worth trying it is worth trying to push yourself beyond your limit and to try and spark something uh because i ended up walking away with a uh, a canon ae1 that works i brought it home tested it out works fine um, and now I'm going to be cleaning it up. I have to get like a rewind knob for it, but those are like 12 bucks on eBay. And I have an AE-1. And then guess what happened after I bought this camera? I went out and I shot more photos. And I think I took some freaking awesome photos today. So I'm, ex- I'm ecstatic because I'm going to get those photos back. And I know I'm going to like them. And I got to experience something I typically don't, typically don't do or should do more often. Um, you know, going out by myself isn't an easy thing to do, but I force myself to do it. It drives me crazy that that's like part of my personality. Anyway, anyway. All right, so we have the camera now. Let's get to the cleaning of this camera. Um, one of the main points of this whole video. Now, I keep this setup super simple. I have... 70% 70% isopropyl alcohol. Um, you could, I have seen people use a little bit higher percent. Um, I just have the 70% with me. Um, so that's what I'm going to be using. Now, that's going to be really good for removing all the junk and debris that has made its way into all the crevices. Now, the way you're going to be reaching those crevices is very simple. You're going to have a Q-tip. <laughs> it is very simple. And... The process is as follows. You're going to take the Q-tip. You're going to dunk it in isopropyl alcohol. And you're going to scrub. And that's it. It's handy to have like a towel nearby. um, Just to wipe down. Keep things dry. You don't want to have the isopropyl alcohol on there for too long. Because I've noticed. Especially around. um, Like uh, all these like old plastic components in the back. And like this faux leather texture back here. Um, if you let the isopropyl alcohol sit on it, it will begin to eat at it, and that's not good. Um, the up top here, there's like this like rubber um, finish on like the winding knob too. You want to be very careful with that. Um, that's not a good area to let it just hang out. You really don't want the alcohol hanging out in there at all. Um, it's going to evaporate anyway, but just something to keep in mind. One other thing you're going to probably want is some lens cleaner. Uh, fun fact: this lens cleaner was made in like the early 2000s i found it sealed in an old camera bag that we had and um it still works fine so i'm going to be using some of that stuff today to clean up this camera so that being said here's a few shots of me cleaning this camera i think it's very dirty but it will clean up in seconds so i'm just going to take some of that lens cleaner put a big splotch on it and i forgot to mention Microfiber towel, immensely important for this step. And this will do wonders. 
on the front element of this lens. Awesome. You'll notice too on the lens, let's zoom in a little bit. We've got some dirt right here. So we're just gonna go right down the side here. And just like that, it is taken right out. It is just picked clean off of this lens. And yeah, look at that, we have pulled so much dirt off of this lens. And I'm hitting it now with just the dry side of the Q-tip. It's gonna be the same process on the back of the lens as well. All right, I'm gonna clean up this camera just a little bit more, just hit all the other nooks and crannies, and then I'm gonna wrap up the video. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the little story I had today um, about finding this camera and kind of like how it all came about. I, this was a pretty important day, I think, because it kind of re-instilled that whole thought process in my mind that all it takes is a step, you know? That you want that first step towards something good, towards one of your goals. And that might be the most important step you take because it could lead you to something like this. I didn't expect my day to go like this when I woke up this morning. I wasn't expecting really much of anything today. I had nothing planned. I'm really happy that I came across this camera. So if you stuck around this long, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I know I can talk a lot. I know I kind of ramble a bit. It's just who I am. Um, thank you for staying as part of that whole conversation there. I hope you enjoyed uh, me showing you how to clean these cameras and um, what else is new? Um, the Shoot Retro website, I recently just did a little bit of an update on it. Uh, if you go check it out, there's new albums up there and new photos. Um, so go check it out. That could be cool. Um, and then go check us out on Instagram. Um, uh, and by us, I mean me. Um, I'm the sole proprietor of this entire ordeal. So go check it out. That acts as my portfolio on Instagram. So, yeah. Leave a comment down below if you'd like to see more of this content. Or maybe if you want to go shopping for cameras with me. That'd be kind of cool. So, yeah. I will see you guys in the next video.